Hi guys, this JJ RC Q60 military truck was sent to me by rcenvironment.com. So thank you very much. The box says it has many funny Chinglish features. But wait, differentials? Really? And it can load 500 grams. The doors and the hood can be opened. And as already mentioned, it has six wheel drive. So now let's unbox this thing. Ta da! Here it is. Okay, let's have a look at the battery. It's a 700 milliamp hour nickel cadmium battery. Inside this box will be the charger, I think. Let's crack it open. Yes, it's the charger. We also got the quality screwdriver and the USB charger. It connects to the 6 volt battery like this. Now let's have a closer look at the truck itself. The doors can be opened, very nice touch. The battery compartment is hidden below the hut. Let's plug in the battery pack. We have lights, they are flashing because there is no radio connection I think. The leaf spring suspension appears to be working fine. The loading door can be opened as well. Now let's have a look at the bottom side. The prop shafts are a bit steeply angled. The drivetrain appears to be the same as in WPL vehicles. It looks like the motor is a 130 size. This is a bit small for a 6VD. The tires are nice and soft and the suspension works fine. What? This is a surprise. Differentials. WPL vehicles don't have that. So far so good. Now let's have a look at the transmitter. The steering wheel feels very very cheap. I assume it will not be proportional. This button changes the top speed I think. What else is included? Some paperwork. With this thing you can download the game. We also got a very big instruction manual. Nothing fancy. Now let's add some double air rechargeables to the transmitter. Will it work? At least we have solid headlights now. Yeah, no proportional steering. And not even proportional throttle. It looks like there is plenty of room for improvement. So there may be an upcoming upgrade video using my micro RC system. This controllability is just horrible.
Now let's compare this thing with a WPL C14 Toyota Crawler. As you can see, the main dimensions are the same. The main difference are the axle with differentials. WPL axles don't have a differential. So here we have it. It looks nice, but the transmitter is horrific. But for the price you can't complain. And it's a good base for upgrade projects. Yeah. Now let's add a passenger. Bye! Time for the first off-road test. The 130 size motor is just too small for this vehicle. Luckily you can find upgraded parts, even two speed transmission boxes. I almost forgot to have a look inside the differentials. So let's do that now. Now we are in. Plastic gears, but with big teeth. We also want to have a look inside the differential itself. So let's remove this axle. Now we can see the metal leaf springs. We have to remove them in order to open the axle housings. So let's do that. Ok, now we can see the pinion. It's also made of plastic. But as I said, big teeth, so they should be pretty robust. Now let's separate the axle housings. All bearings are just plastic bushings. Here you can see the dimensions of the bushings. Now let's remove the wheel and take the differential further apart. Now we are in. Again, big teeth, but only two spider gears. This is an additional shot of the axle internals. I think you can also use these axles in WPL vehicles if you want a differential. And yes, as always, I have added some thick silicon grease. This makes the diffs a bit stiffer and better for crawling. So. Do I recommend this truck? Well, for a child, why not? If you are into scale models, it is a good starting point for an upgrade project. Plenty of upgraded parts are available. And you can use WPL parts as well. 
If you like this video, subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss upcoming episodes. Bye!